Brooklyn won the, the trade, and they won by a landslide. And as far as I'm concerned, Daryl Morey, uh, this may have been the worst move of his career as an executive in comparison to uh, uh, letting go of Chris Paul and a couple of picks for Russell Westbrook. Hmm. Is, that, is, that, is that questionable? The Philadelphia 76ers are better. Nobody's saying they're not better. The problem is you made Brooklyn exponentially better. And as a result of that, they're the team that's going to be standing in your way. It could be Milwaukee as well. As well. We know that. But Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have an all-world defender who's 6'10", ball handling skills, athletic freak, um, high basketball IQ. And guess what? He doesn't want to shoot. So now that's more shots for Kyrie and Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. two of the most prolific professional shot makers we've ever seen. That's what you've done for Brooklyn. Then you gave them Seth Curry, who's one of the prolific three-point shooters. Been injured, shoot 28% for the field for like his last six games. But we know over the course of his career how well he can shoot. And he's a Curry. That means he can shoot. Mm -hmm. We see Andre Drummond. You're thin on your front line if you're the Brooklyn Nets. Everybody's looking at Milwaukee and other teams, and they're saying you're undersized. What do you do? You acquire Andre Drummond, who can grab 20 rebounds a night in his sleep. Good for four to five offensive rebounds a game, which gives Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving additional shots. You add Seth Curry to Patty Mills, who's another prolific three-point shooter. And, oh, by the way, you also give up two first-round picks. I'm sorry. Philadelphia can celebrate. But James Harden has never been under more pressure, and neither has Daryl Morey, so they are in bed together in regards to that. They are under immense pressure. And Doc Rivers, he doesn't get a pass with this either because we know what the expectations are for him. One of the top 15 coaches in the history of basketball that was voted the other day, and deservedly so as far as I'm concerned. I love the guy. But you're under pressure. You got to produce. And if you're James Harden, you have never been under a bigger microscope because now the pressure has elevated in his direction even more so than pressure for Kyrie Irving, more so than pressure for Kevin Durant because if you're Philadelphia and Daryl Morey, who clearly told the Sixers, even though Elton Brand was doing a great job, put me in as president of basketball operations and I'm going to get you Harden. Mm -hmm. He was so transparent in wanting Harden. This is how you give up all that he gave up to get Harden. When Sean Marks lies in wait because he knows this is all about you wanting Harden. You didn't want Damian Lillard or anybody else. Harden is has been your target from day one. You were transparent. Clearly, Daryl Morey does not play poker. And as a result of that, this is what your situation is. He's under immense pressure, and they better get it done. I'll tell you this. The top of first take is going to be fire because your guy, Big Perk, is yes. going to tell you the Sixers are now the team to beat in the Eastern Conference. So he loves said. this trade from the Philly so, side. So, uh, well. so what? I mean, listen. P -p -p listen. Nice. He looks like a professor now. He got yeah. on the glasses and all this stuff. Uh -huh. He's a big boy. He could be intimidating <laughs> to some people. He does not scare me. <laughs> big Perk is my pupil. You understand what I'm saying? I'm the senior. He's the junior. So I'm not concerned about him at all. all right, I'll have my popcorn ready for the top of the show. I want to ask you about something. Sure. Uh, so many things. Sure. No one knows Philly better than you do. You were a columnist of the Philadelphia Inquirer for a long time. Yeah. March 10th, yeah. the Nets go to Philadelphia. Yeah. Do you expect Ben Simmons to play in that game? And if he does, what do you expect the environment to be? If he plays, it will be bad. Um, Philadelphia will never forgive him for what he has done because Philadelphia is a hard-nosed, blue-collar city. And you can honestly say no player in NBA history has ever looked weaker than he looked. Now, he says mental health issues and all of that other stuff, and we take that very, very seriously, and we don't poo-poo that. We don't dismiss that for anybody that's truly going through that. What's important to understand, as I said in front of you right on NBA Countdown mm -hmm. the other day, most people don't believe him. Most people believe that the second he has an opportunity, the second he gets traded, he would be playing for somebody else. Now, if he sat out the next few months because he's still having mental health issues, then that would be a different animal. But if he comes back to play, which is expected, and then suddenly you show up in Philly, they will boo him mercilessly. They will have no sympathy, no pity, no compassion on him. And if he doesn't show up to play, it'll really show that he's very, very weak if you play all these other games, but somehow, some way, you conveniently get injured or sick or something happens that makes you miss that particular game. He can't take that heat. Philadelphia will be like, fine, we didn't want you anyway because we're not a city that's made up of that kind of metal. And Timmy Legler said earlier uh, here, 
th those teams could play in the playoffs. Maybe he's better off getting that out of the way, at least the first return in the regular season before they go. All right, one more thing before I let you go to first take. So I have a tw uh, Twitter poll question up there. You know how I love my Twitter poll. Yes, yes, yes. So we really got, like, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. all of you guys on Countdown, you and Wilbon and Jalen, told me you thought the Heat are the team to beat mm -hmm. in the Eastern Conference. Well, I said Milwaukee, too. Uh, Milwaukee and Milwaukee. Too. But, I mean, I think we all kind of landed on Miami. Yes. Well, now we got the Heat. We got Milwaukee, who mm -hmm. has looked very good. We got the new look Nets and mm -hmm. the new look Sixers. Mm -hmm. Right now, right. who's the team to beat in the East? Milwaukee. And I would remind you that the other day, Wilbon and Jalen said my, Miami. Yeah. I said Miami because that's where I want to be. Oh, that's right. That's I right. said Milwaukee right. is the team right now <laughs> that I'd give the edge to. That's right. And they're acquiring Serge Ibaka, maybe the sleeper of yesterday's trade line, trade deadline. I'm sorry. Yeah, trade deadline. Yeah. Serge Ibaka can help the Milwaukee Bucks, okay? Forget what happened last night with Phoenix. Milwaukee is legit. They're experienced. They're the reigning defending NBA champions. We know what Giannis and Drew Holiday and Middleton bring to the table if fully healthy and loaded. I'm not ruling out Brooklyn because I think Kyrie with KD and Ben Simmons with Patty Mills, Seth Curry, and those boys could definitely make some noise. Here's what I'm most interested in. I love this part. What you going to do, Kyrie? James Harden's gone. That puts more of an onus on you offensively to mm -hmm. help out KD because that ain't what Ben Simmons is here for. So the vaccine and the mandate and all of this other stuff, now more than ever you're going to be needed. And clearly the falling out that took place between James Harden and Kevin Durant had everything to do with Kyrie Irving because KD rolls with Kyrie Irving, and we all know that. There, once again, KD has come to the support and defense of Kyrie Irving. What you gonna do? You gonna leave him hanging? You got an all-world defensive player, a ball handler, a playmaker, an elite defender. You've got the, one of the greatest, if not the greatest scorer in NBA history eventually with Kevin Durant, one of the greatest scorers in NBA history. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.